Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Despite the anti-Christian persecution and anti-democracy persecution happening in Afghanistan, there is now a glimmer of hope where charities like the one led by Jason Jones are feeding the poor. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, we have a live interview with Jason Jones, a returning guest and international Christian charitable activist who is coming to us live via Skype from Washington, D.C., where he is getting ready to hop on a plane to parts unknown. Uh, Jason Jones, how are you today? Welcome to the program. It's great to see you, chaps. Thank you. So. Uh, you were active in Afghanistan. I thought Americans pulled out of Afghanistan, maybe abruptly, prematurely. The Biden administration left a mess behind, and there was a lot of persecution against the forces of democracy. The Taliban took over the government. And what do you know? Well, chaps, you know, the Biden administration's abrupt, catastrophic, ham-fisted withdrawal dug a deep hole a deeper hole in Afghanistan, a hole that was already there. You know, the empires of the world have been digging a big black hole in Afghanistan, Britain, India, um, of course, the Soviet Union, and now the United States. Um, but the people of the world are still there. I would say that our organization, the Vulnerable People Project, has the largest operation in Afghanistan. We never left. In fact, we really didn't show, we don't show up in a place until the world leaves. So. Our involvement in Afghanistan began in mid-July of 2021 and knowing that in July, when Biden went on the air and said Afghanistan would never fall, 85% of the districts had already fallen. So we, we saw this catastrophe coming. And so in, in August of 2021, we really ramped up our work and we've just been growing in our service of the Afghan people, a people that the United States government you know, showed up throwing promises around like Mardi Gras beads and promises that I would not have made. Uh, I'm an anti-war, anti-interventionist, old school, Smedley Butler conservative. Um, but I do believe that if you make a promise, you keep it. And um, we made a lot of promises. We broke them. We left Afghanistan worse than we found it. So your organization uh, does what? And, and how are you growing? What Do you have connections with the government? Well, you know, the Vulnerable People Project, our mission is to stand with the most vulnerable people in the world when the world has left. So in Nigeria, we secure Christian churches. We're beginning to do landmine removal operations in Angola. We're doing we're already involved in that in Ukraine, removing landmines from civilian areas. We work with the Christians in Lebanon, Iraq and Syria. But in Afghanistan, we, we saw this catastrophe coming. Uh, the Biden administration left around 170,000 SIV qualified former Afghan allies. There are 30,000 Christians in Afghanistan that are in a horrible position. Seven million Hazara facing ethnic cleansing and genocide. So what Vulnerable People Project does is seek to serve these communities. We, we are continuously evacuating vulnerable people from SIVs to the widows and orphans of our Afghan allies, to religious and ethnic minorities, to neighboring countries. From there, we have safe houses, and then we work to resettle them in a permanent new home. But we also uh, are working to ameliorate the suffering in Afghanistan. We've delivered 1.5 million meals since Christmas Eve in our Coal for Christmas campaign, where we distribute coal and food to help uh, people in hiding survive the brutal winters. You know, when I was a child and my mother pretending to be Santa Claus would put coal in my stockings, that was because I was a naughty boy. Uh, but yes. you guys did that as a, as a gesture of kindness because the winters in Afghanistan are freezing cold and people need fuel. And you guys were providing a way for people to survive. Yes, chaps, coal is, is a matter of life and death across Afghanistan. And our Coal for Christmas campaign has kept 
at hundreds of thousands of people alive in the past two winters, people in hiding because of their ethnicity, because of their religion, or because they served the United States, or their husband and fathers were killed in action while serving the United States. So this coal is, is very important. And I can tell you with absolute certainty that the Vulnerable People Project has distributed more coal in 18 months than Santa Claus has in several hundred years. Well, thank God for you and for what you're doing. How are you financed and what can the public do to help? Do you know our average donation is $90? Our website is thegreatcampaign.org. Um, if you go to thegreatcampaign.org, $250 donation keeps a family in hiding alive for, two, uh, for four months. So $7 a day, uh, $7 keeps a family alive. Um, go to thegreatcampaign.org and there you'll see our work. We have these banners when our teams show up across Afghanistan that say from the working class people of America to the families of Afghanistan. It's important to us that we know that we want them to know who's supporting them. This isn't the government. This isn't massive foundations. This is Christian conservatives uh, across the United States and across the world. And with our average donation being less than $100 and we've delivered millions of dollars in aid, it really says something about the heart of the American people. I'm an infantry veteran, you're a veteran, and I would say our most, our, the core constituency of our support are, are Christian conservative veterans. Because as a veteran myself, this was, was humiliating. You know, the Ranger Creed says, never shall I leave a fallen comrade to fall in the hands of the enemy. And we saw our allies falling from American planes the way Americans fell from the Twin Towers. And, you know, Socrates says it's better to suffer evil than to be responsible for it. And in many ways, seeing Afghans fall from American planes was harder for veterans to take than to see Americans fall from those towers because we felt as veterans that our sacrifices were squandered. And so we seek to honor the sacrifice of our veterans. And so when you go to thegreatcampaign.org, a civilian active duty or former veteran, we just got an Army Ranger a young man sent us $5,000. He emailed me and said, I inherited some money and I would like to donate my what I inherited. This is an enlisted E-4 Army Ranger. And, um, and that's wow. the core of our support. And I want the Afghan people to know that if you're watching this, that our veterans and the American people did not abandon you. The Biden administration abandoned you. And the American people were devastated. Suicide hotlines, jumped 84% since August of 2021. Um, in Congress recently, they had hearings on the Afghan withdrawal and veterans testified of losing friends in the days and weeks after the withdrawal because of so many veterans were devastated and suicide spiked in those months. And your generosity and the generosity of donors uh, from America proves that we love the Afghani people, uh, regardless of race, creed, religion, uh, we care very deeply about the the liberty that they were promised and the suffering that they are enduring. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about landmine removal and how you can help. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, Jesus taught the parable about sowing the seed and you don't want it wasted, you want it to grow with 30, 60, 100 fold for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I'll tell you three mission areas that we're doing here at Pray in Jesus Name. I think our charity does more with less than any other charity I know. We are fertile seed. For example, number one, we pray in millions of television homes every day or every weekend on eight networks. We have 2.5 billion home TV impressions every month. The second area, we feed orphans and children. In some of the poorest slums overseas, we're building a new vocational school, we're digging wells, and we're serving the poor when you give to pray in Jesus' name. Number three, we defend religious freedom, especially for our troops and our chaplains. We've now helped send five million petitions to Congress. We've helped change bad laws or policies in 13 states and four times in federal law. You know my story as a former Navy chaplain, standing up for the right to pray in Jesus' name and defending religious freedom. Would you donate today? In fact, we want you to come up monthly pledge sponsor. When you visit PrayInJesusName.org, on the right side, click the monthly pledge sponsor button at PrayInJesusName.org. Your monthly gift will help change the world in Jesus' name. 
Maybe you've enjoyed our program and you're wondering, how can we support Dr. Chaps with our tithes and offerings? We've made it so easy right now. You don't even need to go to the website. Just use your smartphone and text the word DONATE to 720-573-0305. You don't even have to get out of your chair. Just pick up your smartphone right now and text the word DONATE to 720-573-0305 and you will help us bring you these programs. God bless you in Jesus' name. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined by Jason Jones, who is active in helping the people of Afghanistan recover from uh, the tragedy of recent years. Jason, there's uh, a move for landmine removal, and, and who put the mines there, and, and why are we needing to take them out? Well, you know, we're, we're, there are landmines littered all over the world, and I will say the United States, uh, we don't use landmines. And uh, when, we, when we did, and if we do, um, we're very disciplined in marking where we put them and we remove them when we leave. In Ukraine, for example, uh, the Russians do not do this. <laughs> you know, uh, the Taliban did not do this. There are still, there's still ordinance across Afghanistan that, that the Soviets left. Um, in Angola, landmines are everywhere. There's a hero, his name is Ryan Hendrickson. He, he came to us, I was actually introduced to him from a Hollywood movie director who's making a movie on his life. This, this hero, this Green Beret, stepped on a landmine and after 27 surgeries had his legs reattached and did six more tours in Afghanistan after having his legs ripped off his body. Upon retiring, Ryan Hendrickson wanted to go to Ukraine. He retired after we left Afghanistan and he wanted to go protect civilians. And um, when the Russian army moves, and they're thrashing Ukraine, they, do, they go where they want, when they want, how they want, and uh, regardless of what the media reports. But when they move, they leave the landmines there. The Ukrainian military doesn't have time to remove these mines. They just move around them, but civilians will rush back into those areas. Ryan showed up, started training the fire departments of all things, and the firefighters there in Ukraine are, and, and volunteers from around the world are working with Ryan. Uh, a, a former SAS British young man just lost his life uh, in a landmine removal operation. So our organization, the Vulnerable People Project, partnered with Ryan. Now he just launched his own organization called Tip of the Spear Landmine Removal, and it's going to become a global effort. The, the Ryan is so courageous and so bold, um, and you know there's a lot of large landmine removal organizations but they are, they don't go in while the battle's still raging. Ryan does. <laughs> Ryan doesn't wait till the war's over. Um, he goes right to the front with his men. And as soon as the Russians leave an area, they begin removing landmines. It was very important with the work they did this past uh, harvest season because they began demining the farms because farmers in Ukraine were so disciplined, so committed to harvesting their crops that they were being hit, hitting landmines left and right with their tractors. And so Ryan and his team went and removed over a thousand landmines from farms. Can you talk about the opium trade? This was, uh, of course, a problem back to in the 1980s, part of the reason that the Soviet Union at that time invaded Afghanistan. And now, uh, <clears throat> since the United States has moved out, since the Taliban has retaken power in Afghanistan, they've sort of legalized that agriculture again, and, and it's really polluting the world with their drugs. Yeah, you know, uh, our organization, the Vulnerable People Project, is committed to, um, in, in the work that we do, it's not only about directly supporting people, but exemplifying how we as Christians should order our lives. And it's to serve the most vulnerable, first in our families, then our neighborhoods, and our communities. And then as nation states, we should work together to serve those most vulnerable uh, stateless people and those most vulnerable uh, nation states. Um, when you have a country like Afghanistan now that was in total collapse, there's 20 million Afghans right now facing acute hunger. Today, countless Afghans will fall asleep and never wake up. Moms and dads and children huddled together will fall asleep because of starvation and cold and they will never open their eyes. Our team's roll up on villages and they see this all the time where they walk in and it looks like a family sleeping, but they're dead. This is the result of our, our foreign policy. And when you have a country where 50% of the population is facing acute hunger, 
it's going to be impossible to stop them from doing what it is that they think they need to do not to starve to death. And so border security, the, the, the war against opioids and fentanyl, standing up to the, to the CCP, this is all, it's all interconnected. From the child in your neighborhood who's gonna die from fentanyl today, he'll never wake up because he takes an opioid or he takes fentanyl, to the family that dies in Afghanistan because of exposure, isn't it startling that they're connected? A 16-year-old boy in the suburbs of Chicago will die today from opioid addiction. Wow. Will never wake up. And a family in, in rural Afghanistan today will fall asleep and never wake up because of exposure. And it's connected. It's connected to our thoughtless, reckless foreign policy. The ideologies of neoliberalism and neoconservatism have thrashed the world. But chickens come home to roost. And the, the ideologies of evil, it's a swamp. The culture of death is a swamp. And in that swamp, there are countless virulent ideologies that grow and ugly creatures that lurk. But it, the gospel of Jesus Christ gives us the solution, which is to love God and to love our neighbor, to treat the people that they deserve to be treated as creatures made in God's image. And our work in Afghanistan, we do not proselytize. To proselytize directly would be to get people killed. And, but, but we know and we get comments and emails all of the time that by radically and sacrificially working to save their lives, the lives of their families and their communities, we're exemplifying to them the love of Jesus Christ, the truth about who they are, whose image they were made in. And, and that's the, you know, God has given us a very simple playbook, love him, love our neighbor, sacrifice our privileges, our strength, our wealth, and our power in the service of the vulnerable. The spirit of Antichrist is the opposite. It's to immolate the vulnerable to us. It's to sacrifice the weak to our avarice, to our desires. And there's the, those are the only two ways to live. And so, you know, we need to pray for the grace to order our will to radically serve the vulnerable from the children in our community that are despondent and suffering and addicted to drugs to the families on the other side of the world who have been brutalized by our, our thoughtless elected officials. We need to take a short break, but uh, Jason so beautifully connects the, the suffering here in America from opioid addiction to the suffering from people in the cold in Afghanistan. And you can relieve that maybe make them less dependent on the sources of, of illicit gain uh, by giving today through thegreatcampaign.org. We'll be right back with Jason Jones. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Chaps. I wanna introduce my friend, Mike Lindell, who wants to help support our ministry in the work of PIJN News. Uh, Mike, what do you think? Well, I think everybody out there, y'all need to get behind Pray in Jesus Names Ministry. Dr. Chaps here, but this great ministry needs your support and you can you should donate to it. You can also use your promo code Pray News and anything you're getting from my pillow with big discounts, a lot of those proceeds are coming right back. I'm gonna put them right back into this, into your amazing charity and show. Well, thank you, sir. I accept that endorsement and we support your work at MyPillow.com. Remember everybody, when you visit, use the promo code PRAYNEWS, you get a big discount and our charity gets a little bit of help. So thank you, Mike Lindell, for your support. They get a lot of help, a little bit, a lot of help. <laughs> we need all we can get for Jesus name, amen. Looks like you've been sleeping well. Megan, he's back. The my pillow guy. And you're looking good. I'm still feeling good. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've got the best pillow ever. My pillow 2.0. When I invented my pillow, it had everything you'd ever want in a pillow. Well, now there's new technology that makes it even better. My pillow 2.0 has my patented fill combined with a cooling fabric with temperature regulating thread. My pillow 2.0 is truly the next generation of my pillow. 
The best sleep just got even better. Whether you have a MyPillow or not, you need to get the brand new MyPillow 2.0. Call or go to MyPillow.com now. Use your promo code, and for a limited time when you buy one, you'll get a second one absolutely free. You're sleeping even better. And cooler, too. And you're looking good. Feeling Feeling good. good. I knew you would. Visit MyPillow.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and due to your incredible support, the original My Slippers are almost completely sold out. As a special thank you, I am launching my brand new all season slippers, slides, and sandals for as low as $29.98. This is a limited time offer, so go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code, and you'll get all my new footwear for as low as $29.98. My all-season slippers are made with my exclusive four-layer design that you won't find in any other slipper. They're finished with a breathable fabric so you can wear them all year round. And my new slides and sandals are made with patented impact gel, making them ultra comfortable and extremely durable. I guarantee they'll be the most comfortable footwear you'll ever own. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen now to get your very own all-season slippers, slides, and sandals for as low as $29.98 with your promo code. This is an introductory offer and it won't last long, so order now. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Chaps. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer because it, it teaches us to love our neighbor. And the Vulnerable People's Project that Jason Jones is uh, have been work, working for a long time there, uh, not just in Afghanistan, but also in Ukraine, and you said Nigeria, and what other locations? You know, well, we're most active. I founded this organization in 2022, really. Uh, as someone who uh, was a veteran, was active in the pro-life movement, was to harness the power of the pro-life movement in service of the Christians and Kurds and Yazidis in Iraq. But from there, we've expanded and we're working to build a hospital with the Persecution Project Foundation and Brad Phillips and his team uh, that, that took the lead there. And they're, at, they're leading the way there in the Nuba Mountains. We partnered with them. We're expanding into Angola this year. We've expanded into Nigeria, where we're securing parishes and we're preparing to uh, secure the last 10 synagogues that are left in Nigeria because they're being burned down. Believe it or not, there's a Jewish community in Nigeria. You know, we look at advocating and serving the vulnerable really like the life of Christ. There's always Palm Sunday. We don't show up on Palm Sunday. I say on Palm Sunday, when the crowds are waving our Lord in, I'm going to go fishing because I know that the best spot to fish is going to have no one out there on the lake. But um, when our Lord is nailed to the cross, that's when I want to be there. And when all of the cameras and all of the foundations and all of the money are rushing there with their lapel pins and their Facebook posts, we're not there. We seek to go where the world has left. And so we worked quietly over the past 20 years. But sadly, the world is abandoning vulnerable communities everywhere now. So it's been a bit overwhelming. You know, we're standing with the Uyghur and Chinese occupied East Turkestan, 3 million Uyghurs. In fact, several thousand Uyghurs that are in hiding in Afghanistan that fled the CCP concentration camps. We've delivered food to them in the past couple of weeks. Where we've got our freeourbishops.com campaign The CCP has disappeared seven Catholic bishops to black prison sites charged with horrible crimes like caring for the elderly, the disabled, uh, handicapped children, for providing orphanages, uh, for teaching religious education to children and giving the sacraments. So, you know, it's really... um, None of those are crimes, by the way. (laughs) Not just in America, but, but for the Communist Party to label those charitable deeds as if they are crimes is really just to keep more abuse upon the people that they are uh, tyrannizing. Yeah, well, they don't think that those disabled are worthy of of care. You know, in my home state of Hawaii, many years ago, we had a, a socialist governor. Uh, he was really a communist uh, and uh, Neil Abercrombie, and he tried to criminalize um, <clears throat> feeding the homeless. But When we said, well, okay, then let's also criminalize feeding feral cats. That was just a bridge too far for them. They didn't, you know, (laughs) so you would have been able to feed feral cats, um, but you would not have been able to uh, feed uh, the most beautiful creatures in the cosmos, human beings. Wow. Who are starving and suffering and struggling and facing mental illness and drug addiction. You couldn't care for them. 
uh, so there's a line. Look, we're dealing with socialists here. We're dealing with right at home. There are those who deny uh, who we are. I say that, you know, I'm not a, a human rights activist, a pro-life activist. I'm an anthropologist. Our mission is really just to tell the truth about the human person and treat the human person as they deserve to be treated. Thank God for that, Jason. You've also made some movies in the past. Um, give a plug for where people can find those. So my movies are thegreatcampaign.org, uh, VPP, um, that's our website. And Movie to Movement is where we make movies. They are both programs of our organization, which is Hero Inc. And so all of my movies, that's what we do through our film. We tell the truth about the human person and we hope to inspire solidarity. Some of my movies that I've been involved in are Bella, The Stoning of Soraya M, Crescendo I made with Justin Bieber's mother, a beautiful film, probably most proud of, Patty Millette and I did that with Eduardo Verastegui. Also right now I have a film out, Divided Hearts of America. Um, it's on Fox Nation and wherever you wanna watch, wherever you watch anything, you go put in Divided Hearts of America. It's a documentary made with uh, former New England Patriot, uh, standout tight end, Benjamin Watson. And it's on how racism how abortion, segregation, and slavery are really the three denials of our founding principle that are at the root of all of our division. And in fact, all three at one point were uh, uh, literally a pillar of the Democrat party. Can you believe that? Slavery and segregation and abortion at one point in history was at the real heart and center of what it was to be a Democrat, and that is the denial of our founding principles. So you could say that the Democrat party, and not to be partisan here, but you can just say from its beginning, it has rebelled against the declaration principle, the truth that we are made in God's image and nation states exist to protect people that live in that political community and in and, and honor and acknowledge their rights. Um, and so that, that the divided hearts of America, you can watch pretty much anywhere now. We're, we're under a minute here, but I do wanna say a prayer for you and, and bless your travels upcoming. Uh, Father in heaven, we pray for Jason Jones uh, and, the, and for your safety as he goes into these dark places and brings the light of charity, of love, of service to the poor and the gospel. Father, I pray that you keep him safe, that you enhance uh, his capacity, that you grow his donor base, that more and more people will begin to serve with him and follow the vision of serving the most vulnerable in our society and in the world. We pray your blessing on him in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> our guest has been Jason Jones, thegreatcampaign.org. Our website is prayinjesusname.org. Again, prayinjesusname.org. Please sign a petition when you go there or donate or call us for prayer at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps need your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.